All right, guys, we are back in the engine bay of the 340i, and we're putting the next modification on here for my 340i build. I'm super excited to do this. I think a lot of you guys probably saw this coming, but we have the MHD flex fuel kit. So this is going to be huge. It's just going to add so much more convenience to the build since I have ethanol available, and it'll allow us to make more power and add just additional safety. I'm super excited to get this on here. So the first thing that we're going to do is come into the trunk and disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. The reason why we do this is because the card likes to pressurize the fuel system anytime you're doing something where it thinks you might start the car. So it'll kind of prime it and make you basically have a smoother start because the fuel system will be pre-pressurized before you actually try to start the car. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'll just make sure I don't open a door or something so that way the car won't try to pressurize the fuel system. But there are so many different circumstances where it can try to pressurize it. Just disconnect it, save yourself the headache. It's going to be a really bad situation if you have a fuel line disconnected and then touching the door handle or something causes it to prime the system and just shoot fuel in your face. So. This will make sure nothing tries to turn on without you actually wanting it to turn on. All right, now we're back at the front of the car and in the engine bay. Of course, we need to remove all of these trim panels in order to access the fuel lines. So it's the same as always. First thing is give each of these 10 millimeter screws a quarter turn. And then pull these panels out. And then we'll go ahead and remove this wire. And then we can pull this rubber gasket off. And then we just move these out of the way so that we can access the bolts for the strut brace. And use a trim tool or a flathead to pop these caps off so you can access these bolts. Now these are T18s, so loosen up these bolts, and then this one up here is a 16 millimeter. If you have more than one, congratulations, you're doing better than me. And then lift this up, pick that out, and then we're going to remove all of these. 10 millimeter bolts all the way around this cover. And we can remove this final cover to reveal our low pressure fuel lines. Now this isn't 100% required, but something that I like to do just to have a little extra precaution is I release the fuel pressure and let the fuel drain out from this fuel line because you can slowly unscrew it and that allows the fuel to come out slowly and in like a more controlled fashion compared to the other fuel line connections where you just kind of pull it off and fuel pours out. So basically what we did here is we put our towel underneath the connection and then you just slowly loosen it. You saw some fuel squirted out a little bit. Again, make sure you've got your gloves on and your safety glasses and it'll slowly drain out. You can barely see it, but you can see the towel getting wet. So fuel is coming out. I just like to loosen this slowly and that will let most of the fuel out. Once it kind of stops soaking up and you've gotten most of the fuel out of that line, then we're ready to move over and install the flex fuel kit. Now, if you're looking at the engine from this angle, this is the low pressure feed line where we're going to actually install the MHD flex fuel kit. So we're going to pick a spot on here to jump in on some cars. This connection is like a 90 degree fitting on the fuel line. So like some G series cars, like I think five series, or if you have like an X3, then this connection might not be straight. So it's recommended to install it on this end. If you have an F series car like mine, then you can install it on either side, but this one's a little more convenient and out of the way so most people install it down here. Now in order to disconnect the fuel line you're going to want to do the same thing as before. So get
get some towels underneath and just be ready for some fuel to come out. Now, unfortunately, the previous owner lost the little C-clip that's supposed to go on here. So it looks like this, this little gray clip that you see right here. So that'll pop off. And then in order to remove this line, you're going to pull back on this black clip and then pull the whole entire line off. So let's see if we can do this without making too much of a mess. Alright, so a little more fuel coming out. Nothing too bad. Um, so now at this point again, you're going to install your flex fuel kit. The orientation only depends on where the male and the female fittings are. So here we have our female fitting. This is your male fitting. And you're going to invert, obviously put the opposite one in the orientation on here so that you can install it on your car. I think probably the cleanest setup will have this with the flex fuel center so pointed downwards. So we'll plug into this line. There we go. Same thing, you gotta pull back on this fitting to slide it all the way on. Give it a little bit of a tug to make sure it's on there properly. And then we plug in this one. There we go. That's simple. And if you have a clean towel, you can try to wipe up any fuel that dripped or got around there. Double check all your connections. So now at this point, it's a good idea to go ahead, connect your battery, and just check for leaks. So as soon as the system pressurizes, it should be pretty obvious if there are any leaks. And as you start the car, you'll be able to tell if there are any leaks anywhere. But just make sure all of your connections are tight. There's no fuel dripping from any of these joints. Make sure you go back. If you loosened your high-pressure fuel pump like I did, tighten that all the way back down. And make sure that everything is good and sealed and then we'll be ready to move on to the wiring. So the way that this kit works is it's actually going to plug into this harness, kind of like a piggyback. You're going to take this off and jump into it with this wiring harness, and that's what's going to actually send the data to the DME from your flex fuel sensor. And just for everybody's reference, this is what it looks like on my 440i with a manual transmission. So you can see that plug isn't there. So that's why this doesn't work on cars with a manual. So we'll go ahead and unplug this and then just kind of pay attention. One kind of looks like this connection down here. So you're going to want to use the other one. If it doesn't plug in right away, you just need to turn the connector all the way around and then it'll plug in. Make sure it's fully seated. And then the same thing with the other side. Plug this in. If it doesn't go in, just turn it all the way around. And now that's fully seated. And then we are going to tuck all this wiring back here through this opening that's already built into the car so that everything can be mounted back here. I'm just gonna use some zip ties also to help keep this in place where I want it to be. That way it'll all stay tucked under the DME cover. Now keep in mind that the plug that this is going to wire into will vary depending on your vehicle. So if you pull out this connector and it doesn't plug into here, then just try to plug it into the next one. It's going to depend on like your model year or like the options and stuff. It kind of varies depending on your car, but it'll only plug into one of these. So if it doesn't work in one, try the other one and it'll work. Now, just to keep things a little bit cleaner, I went ahead and actually unplugged these wires from the actual MHD box. I'm running them underneath these brake lines and just kind of tucking it as much as possible out of the way. I ran it underneath some of these wires for the DME harness as well. So 
do what you need to do to get this all managed properly. We're going to put a couple more zip ties down here to keep it in place. And we'll probably tuck the MHD box back here. And then uh, the last thing that we have is our ground. So it's going to be this screw right here in the middle of the screen. So we're going to do that next. So we're going to go ahead and loosen this nut. It's a 10 millimeter. If you have a ratcheting box wrench like this, it makes the job a million times easier. So highly recommend having one just for a lot of the jobs that we do on our cars. And we're going to loosen this. And then the way that the ground is on this kit, you don't actually need to loosen the nut all the way. You're just going to slide it onto that stud that's coming off. So slide it in and hold it in place and tighten the nut on top of it. And then we'll go ahead and plug the box back in. Now one more thing, of course, is you want to make sure that this is all working. So we reconnected the negative terminal of the battery. And you can see the analyzer has power, can communicate to the DME. Everything is good. Real quick, just jumping forward to show you guys what I ended up with. So we've got one zip tie here holding the plug out of the way. This is where the wires are going through. One more zip tie. This is where I took the actual MHD controller. I can still see the actual LEDs on here. I have like a little loop and then that's where my ground wire is. So basically tucking everything as much as possible. So that's pretty much the last step. Go ahead and button everything back up. Double check it in your actual MHD app to make sure that you can see the flex field reading on your car and you should be good to go.